In today's quick Thursday tip, we're going to talk about the Power Apps Distinct function. And so distinct, or sometimes you think of unique, is just a way to look at a table of data and say, hey, I want all the distinct values. So like all the departments or all the statuses or all the states, right? Just some type of filtering out your data where you can just get the unique values so we can use that for filter and such. So what we're going to do quickly is run through the distinct function, how it works. There's two main points I want to teach you about it. We'll talk about those and then show you some other ways that we use that once you understand those two points. But first, here's our intro. Hi, my name is Shane Young with Power Apps 911. Those guys. And today we're going to talk about the distinct function in Power Apps. And so the idea of distinct is it gives you the ability to look at a table of data and say, hey, I only want the distinct values out of a specific column. So maybe it's all the distinct people or all the distinct departments or all the distinct whatever it might be. It gets you a way to pull out that distinct data. And most commonly what we're going to do is we're going to put that data into like a drop down. So maybe you can filter out your data set and say, hey, only show me this or that, you know, based on that particular set of data. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through how to do distinct. We're going to talk about a couple of the most common issues that people run into. There's a lot of them. So we're going to talk about the two main ones there. And then we'll show you a really neat trick that someone on Twitter taught me. So I'll switch over to desktop and take a look. For today's video, we're going to start with a blank white screen. So first thing we need to do is insert a data source. And so we're just going to do an insert and I'll go choose gallery and then a vertical. And then we're going to use my SharePoint list that I use for most of my demos here, right? My good old friend, the employees list. Now, one thing important to understand, right, this is that first major point, is that distinct is not delegable, right? So that means that distinct only processes the first so many records in your data set. And so if you're not familiar with delegation, I'll put a link to the video up here. I have covered it in great detail. But why that is so important is that because it's not delegable to any of the data sources, nothing that we're going to demo here matters for your data sources, right? So whatever data source you want, all these same things apply. So I'm just going to use SharePoint because it's easy, but we could be using Dataverse, we could be using SQL, Excel, it doesn't matter. All the same rules apply. And so why important is about distinct though, is if you think about it, if my list had 20,000 people in it or 20,000 records, then when I said, hey, write me a distinct query, it's only going to go by default, check the first 500 records, right? So to get the distinct values from the first 500 and show those up in my drop downs, but it's not going to show all of them. So that's your first major thing we want to make sure you all understand. It is not delegable. So let's see how we might use this. So what we're probably going to do is we're going to throw a drop down up here at the top and we're going to say, Hey, I want, oh, I want the distinct and from employees. So that's the data source we're going to pull from. And remember this can be any table that's important. We'll kind of come back to that, but this could be any table that you wanted. So distinct from employees and what is the expression? So what column is really, it's what it's saying. What column do you want distinct on? And so in my case, I'm going to say, give me from the distinct, the department column. We close our parentheses and we hit that and look, we can hit play. And so now we see all the distinct departments, but the fact in my data set that I have four executives or I have two people in it, you don't see it twice in executives four times, which is a lot of times what you guys end up doing. So that's where distinct does a good job. It only shows one instance of each of those. Now, I told you it's not delegable, but if you look at this, you're like, but Shane, I don't get any of those yellow warning triangles you told me about. I don't get any blue lines. I agree. This is a mistake on the Power Apps part that it does not warn you that this is not delegable. So what you might want to do if you don't believe me, which is fair, the way that I always prove to myself that things aren't delegable, because I had doubts earlier, is you can go over here into your delegation settings. I'm going to change this to one. Right? So that means only get back in a non-delegable query, only get back the first record that matches. And so by changing that to one, you go over here, you're like, oh, Shane, they're all still there. That's fair. So what you probably can do is go here to employees and do a refresh. So this is going to reload my data source. I have a video coming on refresh. You guys have a lot of questions about that. And so after several seconds, my data refreshed, I see all the records still here, right? Because this gallery is just calling employees that is delegable. So that one is not affected by that one setting, but this dropdown only shows me one item because it's a non-delegable query. So it said, Hey, SharePoint, give me the first, only one record that matches or from that data source, give me the first record. And then I'm gonna do a distinct on that one record. So anytime you have doubts that delegations happening, change this to one, and then you can prove to yourself that you're having delegation issues. So that's your first major lesson. This is not a delegable query. Okay. 
So now that I've done that, let me do another refresh to get it all back. Okay, so there you go. I did the refresh. So we're back to where we were. We're seeing all the results because I only have like 17, 12 records in that data set. So, but there you go. So that gets your distinct out of there. That's how you create this drop down with distinct. Now you say, hey, the next thing that people ask is how do I sort the distinct data? That is totally fair. So what you can then do is you can just go to sort by columns right here. So sort by columns. Remember, sort by columns just needs a table. Distinct put out a table. So sort by columns is happy. Do a comma. And then this is the next major issue with distinct. You're like, where's all my columns? I want to sort by department. Why can't I sort by department right now? Or first name or ID or anything else? Because distinct, if you highlight just distinct here and then hit this drop down, right? It tells you it makes the table. So you can hit the drop down. Distinct, what it does is it produces a single column table where the name of the column is result. And then it puts all the data, all the distinct values in there. So this is the, no, the second biggest issue people have with distinct. They're like, where'd all my data go? Your data's not lost. You're, you, it did exactly what you wanted. You wanted distinct values for department. So there's the distinct values for department. That made that single column table. So we can pass that to sort by columns. And so then now we only have one column possible to sort by results. But then now we will see, oh, let's hide this. That's too much taking up my screen. But so then now we have the distinct values and then it was passed to sort by columns, which then put it in alphabetical order. Whoa, my sanity is restored. I hate when drop downs are not in alphabetical order. So there you go. So that's the second most important thing. But now that you understand that distinct only puts out that one column, then hopefully what you get, right? Let's just do a label on the screen real quick, is that if I want to get values out of that drop down, right? So we're going to say drop down one dot selected dot. The only column you're going to see here is result because that's the only data it knows. And it makes sense, right? Like I struggled with this the first time I thought about distinct also because you're like, wait a minute, but I want, I want first names or I want titles or whatever. You can't get that, right? It, 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 those aren't distinct. The only thing that was distinct here was that single column name. So what you might do is say, hey, well, then what I want to do, so I only see all the people that are in a specific department. Um, so what we'll do here is you could then say, well, I want to filter employees. And so you'd say where department equals combo box, combo, or wait, it's not combo box, it's drop down. Drop down one, I could have used a combo box, it'd be all exactly the same, selected dot result. And so then now, when I choose accounting, there's Chewy, if I choose executive, there's a bunch of us, right? If you choose IT, who even knows? So there you go, it's Daniel and Chewy, right? They're best friends. Um, but so there you go, you can kind of see we have this ability, but the key message is that it was drop down selected dot result. So then now you have the whole record, right? Someone was asking me about how do you patch with distinct? I didn't even understand, like I, you wouldn't patch with distinct, right? You use uh, distinct most often to filter down the data. And then now if I wanted to, I could select Chewy's record or Daniel's record here and then patch those, okay? So those are the key things here. Now, I did want to show you a couple of nerdier things about this thing. So if you stayed with me, you get a couple bonus nerd things. So one is someone said, hey, I want to be able to do, uh, there's three things. So one is I want to be able to do distinct on any column. So that's no big deal, right? I could change this and say, show me the distinct um, age column, right? And so then this would give me a list of all the ages. Now, this is not unusual with distinct. You change it and you're like, wait a minute, it didn't change the data. If it does that to you, just break it and then put it, put it back together. And then now there's all the distinct ages, right? So you can do it on number columns. You do it on date columns. You can also in SharePoint, for example, do it on a complex column like created by. You can say created by dot display name. And so then now you're going to see a list of the distinct ones. Now it didn't update. That's fair. We'll just break it. We'll fix it. And so then now we see, and I did all the creating, so I'm the only one that's listed there. But if there was other creators, they would have been there. And you're like, wait, Shane, but that's not going to work. That's a complex column. It doesn't delegate. Who cares, right? Distinct doesn't delegate. So it didn't matter that we wanted to do a distinct on a complex column like that. So that was bonus tip number one. Bonus tip number two. Let's make another one real quick. Um, so someone else, I forget who it was, said, hey, I want to be able to do it on a, I want to combine two fields and do it. So you can't do distinct directly on two fields. So what I did for him was I said, hey, I want to 
add columns to employees. Remember, that's your function for combining or making your own column. And so we're going to call it full name. And then what am I going to do? I'm going to take first name. Oh, first. Where'd you go? First name. And then concatenate a space and a space. And then last name like that. So then that would make me a, a single column or it would make me a table that was employees plus an extra column called full name. So that would work in the drop down here. Right? I could go over here and say drop down, show me the full name column. So then there's everyone's full names. All right. So then now that's a table of data. So distinct works on any table of data. So we could do distinct and then full name. And then now we have a distinct list of full names. So you can do that type of column aggregation as well. Uh, you know, I'd never done that before, but it made a lot of sense since I wanted to reinforce that with you. All right, one more. I know I'm running over time. I went longer than I wanted, but that's okay. We'll show you one more thing. Okay, so this is a tweet from Ed. So Ed posted this back in August, and I never thought of it this way, and I thought, pretty cool, so let's give Ed some props. Yay, Ed, woo! But so what he did was he said, hey, I want to have a way to do like we did up here, right, where we did distinct employee, but we're going to do department again just because that's what my data is set up to do. But he said what I wanted to do, though, was I want, he wanted to add a column on the fly that was like an all or a blank column. So that's what his code showed. So let's steal what he did. So I'm just going to paste in his code that I modified to be mine. So what he did was use the ungroup function that we haven't covered before. I don't have time to cover today. But this is going to create a column called or a, a table called my tables. Um, but it's going to be a distinct value of employees department, but it's going to have this extra all at the top, right? So if we drop down here, you're going to see all and then all of my departments. Woo! You can see here, I also went ahead and sorted them. So this is a little bit of a bonus one. I don't have time to break it completely down how it works, but this was an amazing result by Ed because it gave us the ability to have a drop down with all without doing a collection, which we normally would have done. And so then here, what I would do is I would just would have went back here and then said, hey, if um, drop down one, whoop, drop down one dot selected dot uh, result equals all, then just show me all the employees, right? So make this gallery show me everything. If not, filter it by the selected value. And so now what you've got is there's all my employees, but if I say, hey, now I want to filter it down to just see executives. There's the executives. Or if I want to see just IT, there's my IT folks again. Go back to all, we see all. So I thought that was a pretty awesome result that Ed came up with. So kudos to him. So there is the if formula that you need in your gallery. And then, of course, here is the uh, actual formula that you would need. And so this is nothing new, right? You would just put this line in exactly the way it is. And then you would just come right here and inside this distinct, you need to change the data source and your, um, your, your info. So also remember, if you're a subscriber to training.powerapps911.com, you can download this app or this code will just be on the screen so you can copy and paste so you don't have to type it all in again. A uh, little well, courtesy to my subscribers. So all right, with that, I went way over. I apologize. This video is too long, but I wanted to show you this. So anyway, thanks and have a great day. Before you go, be sure to click on the subscribe button over here so that way you'll be notified when new videos come out. If you need any help or you want to work together, whether your problem is big or small, check us out at Power Apps 911. We do it all. I rhymed. Or if you're looking for more formal training offerings, we have those linked up here somewhere. So check them out. Thanks and have a great day.